Good morning. It's the morning of September 11th, 2012, and everything I'm about to say is non-scripted, unscripted. Um, I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth in the next few minutes. I've been thinking about what I wanted to share with you. You know, uh, 11 years ago today, America changed. I can remember as a young child, I was five years old, and uh, I remember a woman run, running up to my mother and I in a uh, stop and shop. Uh, it was in Union, New Jersey on Route 22. Uh, it was pretty rare for a young kid. And uh, she was screaming, the president's been shot, the president's been shot. That was November 22nd, 1963. Uh, it's probably one of my first memories. Uh, might explain a lot about me. But that was, that was a day in America's history <clears throat> that we changed as a nation. Uh, a lot would say we lost our innocence. And uh, it's reflected throughout our society in the last 49 years since that event. 11 years ago was another one of those watershed moments. I was a career educator. I had been teaching about 15 years. And um, I had just changed school districts. I decided to leave a... Uh, a suburban district where I was uh, very frankly tired of the administration and a lot of the parents and a lot of the helicopter parents and uh, a lot of the nonsense that was going on in that district. And I moved into a district which was an inner city district, which was pretty interesting because people, friends of mine and colleagues of mine said, you'll never survive. You know, you'll never survive. You're a suburban white boy going into Patterson. Well, it turned out to be three of the most rewarding years of my career. But about three days into school, on September 11, 2001, it was about 9 o'clock in the morning. And the history teacher, who I already had suspicions about um, being, well, let's just say he wasn't all there up here, walks into my classroom, something that educators typically never did. Um, especially non-science educators, and uh, pronounces that the uh, World Trade Center is on fire. Now, my suspicions about this guy turned out to be completely true because about a year and a half later, he almost got himself fired when he fell for the ultimate trick in the book where the kids swapped videos on him. Yeah, we were still using VHS at that time. And uh, they put a porn in instead of uh, the video he intended to show them. Well, that certainly made news within the school community. But on that morning, on the morning of September 11, he walked into my room and he pronounced that the World Trade Center was on fire. He did it quietly. He let only I know. And I was in the middle of teaching a class. And when I'm teaching a class, I am laser focused on what I'm doing. So I proceeded to do what I do. I multitasked. I had then as I do now, always, my laptop in front of me. At the time, it was probably a uh, Mac PowerBook. And I had kind of a funky connection to the Internet. I don't remember exactly how I was connected. But I remember it wasn't the greatest connection in the world. And I started as I was trying to teach my students, who were still getting used to me, and I was getting used to them, and we were beginning to build a rapport I'm out here surfing on the web trying to hit uh, Fox News, CNN, Yahoo, um, going after whatever source I thought I could to pull up a page, and the pages were not pulling up real fast. Well, finally, about 15 minutes later, a page loaded. Yes, the internet was that bogged down. Remember, it was the World Trade Centers where... Um, center towers, I should say, where giant hubs were for um, the internet. So when they went down, when they went on fire, when those planes hit those buildings, uh, the infrastructure of the internet was severely rattled, especially in those days when, you know, it wasn't as robust as it is now. Um, I finally pulled a page up, and I saw what had happened. Heart sank. And I broke it to my students. 
and I remember some girl called out something. I don't remember what it was. It was an immediate shot from the knee, blame, blah, 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 whatever. You know, that day for me, and probably for a lot of Americans, was a day of awakening. It was a day of sorrow. It was a day to be angry. It was a day to be fearful. I had friends. Now, again, where was I? I was in Wanakew, New Jersey, not far from Manhattan. I lived in Little Falls, New Jersey, a lot closer to Manhattan, um, from the ridge uh, along the parking lot in the uh, co-op that I lived, we could see the part of the skyline. And when they had the uh, the lights, the shadow towers, uh, a few months later, they shone bright in the sky. Uh, a constant reminder of what had happened. So many emotions. So many emotions. A couple hours later, the... Uh, administrator who was in charge of the school showed up and we were on a county college campus this was a uh, magnet school if you will it was a charter school type environment um, there were just ninth graders we were starting school I was the science teacher the history guy was the history teacher it's pretty interesting arrangement and one that I feel blessed to have been a part of The administrator showed up and said, we're sending them home. We're going to send them home early. We're busing them, of course, because uh, we were busing these kids out of Patterson and into a community called Wanakew, New Jersey, about 10 miles northwest of Patterson. Why? Because that administrator had a great relationship with the local county college, which had a satellite campus in Wanakew, and there we were. Well, he bussed them back, and I found out the next day we had a snow day. So we call them in New Jersey when there was no school the following day. And um, I personally went down to Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook, uh, not to go in the water, it wasn't even that warm. But because the north end of Sandy Hook, there are some picnic table areas. And I went there and I was able to see lower Manhattan. It's only about, I don't know, 10 miles, if that, by air from Sandy Hook to Manhattan. I saw the remnants, I saw the smoke. Fortunately, I didn't smell the smoke. The smoke was blowing out to sea. <clears throat> I understand from those who smelled it, it was not pleasant. And that's when it began to kind of hit home. I mean, what happened on the 11th for me was like, uh, you know, I couldn't process it. I couldn't process what was going on. I was your typical American. I was focused on my job, I was focused on my career, I was focused on my friends, I was focused on my community. I was not focused on national politics, not in the least. You know, George Bush had been president for nine months, and when the election came up in November of 2000, I was standing in the voting booth going, Bush, Gore, Bush, Gore, Bush, Gore, Bush, all right. I'll pull Bush's lever. I didn't have strong convictions one way or the other. I didn't know then what I know now. In 11 years, I've done a tremendous amount of growing, and maybe that's the best thing that came out of this. Not me growing, but all of us growing. And if you've grown too, maybe you've grown in a direction that I have. Not out, but intellectually to understand first of all just how special this nation is to understand that freedom is something to be protected what was it Franklin said something to the effect of Benjamin Franklin uh, those who would give up their freedom for security will lose both security and their freedom and they deserve neither I think there's a lot of truth to that I've become educated on the founders and what the founders were all about. And I've learned a lot of things about this nation. I've learned that this nation is worth preserving and protecting. I've learned that this nation is in a precarious position unlike it's ever been in its 200 plus year history. I've learned right now that the odds are against us 
Our dollar is a fiat currency, and if you don't know what that means, you need to find out what that means. I've learned that because of our debt and because of the way we've monetized our debt and because of the demographics in our country, the fact that we have 76 million baby boomers who have uh, over 100 trillion in entitlements that have been promised to them that they've paid into that are unfunded. Why? Because we've had Congress after Congress after Congress and executive officer after executive officer after executive officer, meaning the president, who have raided the bank. I don't know whether it started with FDR or Truman. I don't know how bad Eisenhower was or Kennedy. But I know for sure that almost every president, almost every president since LBJ has been raiding the kitty has been spending money they don't have whether it was Johnson on his great society where he in effect condemned an entire uh, proud group of uh, well an entire proud race to almost permanent poverty because of what the great society has done to those fine people you can infer what I'm talking about there in fact I would argue that LBJ did more damage to those people than Jim Crow and slavery did. Nixon, no better. Ford, inconsequential. Carter, a disaster. Reagan, a ray of hope. Reagan moved in the right direction in some ways, but still was not strong enough to fight a Congress that opposed him. I know the founders set it up so that there was an oppositional system, so our country should move in slow motion, which, by the way, is so scary about right now, with the executive orders being issued that supersede and bypass Congress. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you need to learn these things. You need to learn these things before you pull a lever in November, making what might be the most important and consequential decision in this country since 1860. We learned after September 11 that it was Saudis that were involved. We learned that they had lived among us in American cities before they boarded those planes. I learned that a couple of them lived in Patterson. And I learned that one of the reasons Patterson had a snow day on the 12th was because the Palestinians were on the street in South Patterson parading around and celebrating the tragedy that had occurred a day earlier. They were celebrating the death of Americans. Why? Because they associate us with Israel. So is the answer for the United States to disconnect from Israel? Heck no. Israel is the modern representation of God's people. If you're a biblical, Bible-believing person at all, and I believe the majority of our country identifies themselves as believing in God. If you believe in God at all and you believe in his book, the Bible, I don't care if you're Jewish and you only accept the Old Testament or if you're Christian or some variety of Christianity and you accept both Testaments, Israel is the one of the prophecies, the return of Israel, and it says clearly those who support Israel will be blessed. Those who abandon it will be cursed. Again, I'm paraphrasing. So we learned that the Saudis were behind this, but not the government. Up to you if you want to believe that. I believe it was FDR who first made contact with the Saudis and was looking at their oil and made agreements with them and I believe he knew he was doing a deal with the devil and I think probably every president has known that at least every president up until now I'm not gonna get political today but those of you who follow what I say and follow what I'm about you know where I'm at I also learned as I became educated on this whole topic that radical Islam is, has been a problem for this country since its inception. Even in the Star Spangled Banner, it refers to the shores of Tripoli. I believe it's called the Barbary Coast. There were problems with Muslims attacking our ships as they navigated the waters from America over to Europe. And Washington and Adams, interestingly, Washington, George Washington, the Washington who fought 
the Revolutionary War, and maybe he was all fought out. Maybe he was like, I'm done with this. I don't know. But rather than start a Navy, Washington decided to pay bribe money to the pirates, the Muslim pirates, so that they wouldn't attack our ships. Adams continued that policy. And by the end of Adams' term, I believe 16% of the United States budget was going to or towards paying off the pirates, the Muslim pirates. It was probably one of the main contentions in the election of 1800. But Thomas Jefferson came in and said, enough of this. Thomas Jefferson is the father of the Navy. Thomas Jefferson started the United States Navy. And what did he do? He sent it over to the coast, I guess it was off the coast of Africa, and decimated the Muslim pirates. That ended the problem. <laughs> that ended the problem. They respect power and authority, nothing else. They can't be negotiated with, they can't be debated with, they can't be coexisted with. We went over and we kicked their butts. And for a long time, you didn't hear anything about it. And I'll tell you this, I remember whether it was Jefferson or somebody else brought over a Koran and wrote in it, all Americans need to read this, you need to see what's in there. I don't want to come across prejudiced or bigoted, and today's not a day for that. But today is a day for understanding. 912 was the beginning of a period, especially in 2001, where people actually treated each other well. But I'm from New Jersey. We knew it wouldn't last, and it didn't. So where does that take us now? It takes us to a point where some Americans have awakened. I'd like to think I'm one of them. I'd like to think you're one of them if you're still watching this video. I'd like to think you're going to share it with somebody. You know, I'm a businessman. I'm here to build videos and build a following online and build business. And I'm going to have a business-related video coming out probably tomorrow that I'd love for you to watch because I have some very good and very powerful news. But I'm not going to do business today. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share this with you. Go out and make somebody, somebody's day better today. Pay it forward in some way. Find somebody who's hurting and do something nice for them. Buy them a sandwich. Give them a power bar. Shake their hand. Say hello to them. Smile at them. Whatever. Do something that lifts society just a little bit. And realize that most Muslims are good people. Most Muslims, I don't believe, are radicals. Most Muslims do not support radical Islam. I believe that most Muslims are afraid of radical Islam. So don't hold Muslims in contempt. Saudi government? Maybe. Some Saudi citizens? Probably. Some, other, some others from that part of the world and our own country? Probably. And that's why we all have to be vigilant. We all have to have our eyes open. We all have to be aware. And what we also have to do is get educated. Because if you're still not sure about the direction that this country is headed in, if you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow in Germany that could directly impact the United States, if you don't understand why the stock market continues to skyrocket, and that's a big danger sign, a big warning sign, if you don't understand that 8.1% unemployment is a phony number, and you don't understand what the real numbers are and what real trouble they spell, if you don't understand what happened in New York City just a few days ago, where urban youth came very close to rioting, and why that's so scary, not because they're black and Latino, no, but because of the way they were raised, and because of the fact that a good percentage of them are unemployed. Those are statistics, folks. Those are the numbers, and numbers don't lie. If you don't know what those numbers are, then you need to educate yourself and you need to get out there and find out what's going on. 
because there is a clear decision to be made in November. There, there couldn't be a more black and white separation, and I don't mean that literally, between the two candidates who are running for president. And it's not just them. Get familiar. Get familiar with who your local representatives are that are running for the United States Congress and for the United States Senate. Shame on you if you just go down party line and pull the lever. I am not a Republican. I am not a Democrat. I'm not an independent either. I'm a conservative libertarian. I will vote Republican if I think that's the best candidate. I will vote Democrat if I think that's the best candidate. Show me one. Well, anyway, um, I said I wouldn't get political. So listen, it's September 11th. Go out and make somebody's day better. Reflect on what happened 11 years ago. Pray for the souls of those who passed, and more importantly, for the survivors who love them. And then go out and get educated. Read the 5,000-year leap. Read a Meritopia. There's so much that you can do that will help you to grow as a person and make you more valuable to yourself, your family, and your country. With those thoughts, Alan Sills signing out. Thank you.